in the five koshas does one's ego exist in all of them or does it primarily primarily reside only in some subset at a given time depending on the person whether they are sleeping awake or in a dream state interesting question and what did we we when we touched upon the koshas in tattva bodha we had some ideas that were given to us antamaya kosha what is that god right and then pranamaya kosha what does it what does it entail pancha prana five pranas and karma indriyas okay and then anomaya kosha manas and jnana indriya विज्ञानमय पोषा बुद्धि एंड ज्ञान बुद्धि एंड ज्ञान एंड देन कामुकमय पोषा कारण शरीर सो कारण शरीर फॉर कामुकमय इन द मिडिल वी हैड सूक्ष्म शरीर एंड देन स्थूल शरीर और and if this much is understood then it becomes easy to see where the ahankara fits generally when the ahankara is not mentioned it goes along with the buddhi okay generally but here one can have the body the aham buddhi in the body also I don't know if that's what the questioner is asking. The body, I am as good as the body, iti buddhi. That can also be there, right? And so, it's not about depending on the person. There is a universal tadanya identification with the koshas, which are seen as losai, plural of locus, locus singular, losai plural. Locus means any locuses, okay. <laughs> so of error. And who is it that's making the mistake? Does the body make a mistake? No. So keep feeding it; it will keep growing. All right. And so who is it? Mind also jana. It doesn't. It cannot make a mistake. Who are they? Who is it that's making the mistake? Yeah, I thought, I know. So the error, so the koshas are divided according to sthula, sthukshma, kāgana, sarira. But the ahankara slips in between and says, my body is equal to me body. That is the error. I am as good as the body. Body is not saying that. I am saying that. And who is that I? The one that identifies with it. So the hankara is because of the presence of the hankara only, the error is recognized, and the one who is being taught is the hankara. Adi Shankara asks this question. So he makes this question answer thing for everybody to understand. Where is Ajnana located? Is it located in the body? Is it located in the mind? And Adi Shankara says it is located in the Prashtubhu Swarupe Eva. Who is asking the question? The place where the question is being asked, that is exactly where the Ahankara is there. As though we have to understand that. So and so that is why the whole thing, all the classes, everything is for this ahankara that one cannot even find, that one cannot even locate, and doesn't know where it is. And uh, this is what it is. Very interesting. It's all a paradox. 
Next. The further discussion of the meaning and context of the content we are studying in chanting class be provided. If not, scans of source discussing the meaning provided be provided, please. You know, in the chanting class, there is always a, what's that? Race between studying the charts and studying the meaning. How, how much to study, what to do. So, whatever is provided, you take. And then there is always Swami, Bhugala Nanda, who consent. And here, you know, that Swami is very burdened, and many things can be found there. There are many things that are that you can take, and then if uh, you know, and if, if something looks fishy, looks doubtful, you can approach the teachers to clarify. This is what the translation is saying. Uh, is it correct? Say if there is some doubt, if it's looking funny, you approach. Okay. Swamiji, Swamiji, in the previous question, yes, yeah, I have a doubt. Kosha question. Kosha question. Yeah. You said that uh, the Tadatmiyam is universal. Yeah, uh, everybody, so unless one has Atmiyam, yeah. it's universal. So Tadatmiyam of Ahankara with the body is universal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Aham Dehara, Idam Mama, all this, this is universal. Then Adi Shankara says, I am Loka Vyavaharaha. This is universal. So in the whole world, this is on the transactional level, empirical level. This mistake alone makes one have a job. Mistake alone makes one get married. Mistake alone makes one, uh, uh, you know, go to various pursuits based on a mistake. Based on one mistake, which leads to many, 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 many different mistakes. So, uh, it's not that, you know, what is that? It's, it's not that having a job is a mistake. Yeah, please don't leave your jobs. It's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, it's based on the whole transaction in the world is based on the error that I am not enough. I am not okay. The two words is very simple. That I am a finite, limited individual. Naisargiko Vayam, Loka Vyamaharaha. He concludes this uh, first paragraph on Adhyasa. Naisargika means it seems to be the most natural to make this mistake. Premonitions are different than dreams and they occur in between the waking and the dream states. What are they? Uh, where do they exist? Where? I don't know. <laughs> so we can't keep finding location for all things. What are they? I can perhaps talk about it a little bit. There is in the Jungian psychological terminology, there is an expression called lucid dreaming, which is neither sleeping nor awake, and not dreaming either. It's none of the three avasthas that one knows, it's some kind of a lucid dreaming. One is aware, kind of aware of one's body, and is kind of aware of being given some gift of this particular knowledge. What for, we don't know, because it depends on the person, it depends on the knowledge, all these things. So some gift is being given, and then that is, that is uh, so some either a premonition or some prophecy, or just some information or something, some event one is able to see. In the Mahatmukya Upanishad, this is kind of the experience which is called Ubhayata Pratya. 
Well, when we are aware of oneself, all these yogis are aware. Even one is aware of everything else also at the same time. That is what we can say. Where it occurs, I don't know. Why it occurs also, I don't know. What are some hallmarks or signs that someone is a Jeevan Mukta? Is it possible for someone who is not a Jeevan Mukta to recognize someone who is? Let's answer the second question first, part B. No. <laughs> Only a Jeevan Mukta can recognize another Jeevan Alright. What are some hallmarks? that we will come in the second chapter itself towards the end. The hallmarks will come. Primarily two in number. First one is the one who has the ability to let go of the desires and fancies even as they arise in the mind. Without needing to entertain them. The one who is full like the ocean, which does not miss a river if it dries up along the way and does not join it, and does not feel overwhelmed and has a scarcity mentality if there are rains and no more rivers, let's say, join the ocean. The ocean doesn't get overwhelmed and perturbed. There is no scarcity mentality. So this is what the Bhagavad Gita describes at the end of the section of the hallmarks of the Jnani or the Jeevan Mukta. Aapurya Maanam Achala Pratishtha One who is full always, regardless of whatever comes or leaves. And, and what is this whatever? Desires. Desires enter the person as it were, like the rivers entering an ocean. The ocean was already full. The desires are not going to make the, the rivers are not going to make the ocean fuller than before. No. Ocean was already full. And similarly, the person is already limitless and knows it. And the desires become a vibhuti. Vibhuti means it's a glory for other people. That is what we have uh, seen. That is one of the hallmarks of the Jnani. And two others are mentioned in the beginning of the section. Uh, oh, sorry, one other one is uh, mentioned in the beginning of the section. Atmani eva atmana pushta. One who is happy by themselves. And if anybody here wants to say, I am also happy by myself, as long as I have my tablet, my phone, my laptop. None of these should have, not even a book. Nothing. And that is what the person no longer wants to run away from oneself because the self that is being talked about is what? Is, is nothing to run away from. One has discovered that. And that is the, that is the, these are the two hallmarks uh, of the Jeevan Mukta. Others are there, we will see that. The primary ones is not being. Not looking for the desires to complete oneself, letting everything go as it even arises. And the second one is being happy without any props. No stick, no crutch in the form of people, events, things. When we address a living being, example Shankaracharya uh, came yesterday. Does that person, does that person have all the six bhagas that Ishvara has? You also have all the six bhagas that Ishvara has. Why only Shankaracharya? Everybody has. Yes. You have overlordship Aishvarya, at least over the family dog. If you say so, it's six. Yeah. Of course, you have to have a dog biscuit in the hand. And that's it. Small Aishwarya. Or you see some bug in the room, it has entered. 
and then you, you have full freedom to just give it instant moksha. Go like this with the foot. Alright? Or you can take a piece of paper and lovingly collect it and squat it outside and say bye bye. <laughs> have fun. Oh my gosh, we also have Jayanti Kishwaraj. We also have knowledge. We also have Shri. Shri means bank account, okay? And any other kind of abundances that might be there. Everybody has. But the difference is it is came repeated. And the Shankaracharya also said this. He said, you must be thinking, especially people who are here from other countries must be thinking. That uh, why all this stand there for one human being? Do I have to sit on this throne? Do I need all this? And he says, it is not for me. It goes with the status. It goes and it, it is there because of what? It is because of the parampara. Because everybody cannot be a leader. If everybody is a leader, it will be chaotic. And if nobody is a leader, it will be anarchistic in the spiritual realm. So therefore, we have tried and chosen people who we agree to respect for their seat. Because it's an ancient seat of learning and we have occupied that seat. All this is for the seat. And that is what we have to understand. Is it good to live a prideful life? What do you think? <laughs> Is it good to lead a life full of pride? First of all, are you asking for yourself? Or for somebody else. <laughs> that also is a very important thing. I find this question very intriguing. Pride right, means what? You know, that is that is the feeling I am the doer, I have done this, I have done that, all this. Mahita in Sanskrit it's called Mahita. Mahitvam. Or Manita, Manitvam, you turn out Manita, feminine. Right? So, really speaking, even if you ask the most accomplished person, what will they say? I had help. I had inspiration in the form of my mother, my father, my grandfather, grandmothers, my teachers. So, all women. There is really no such thing called the self-made man. There is it. It's a myth. The so-called self-made man would always have some stories. I had only two sets of clothes. One dhoti or one me. And the other one was hanging on a tree to dry. Two sets of clothes given. You know the self-made man will say to his children, you know, I studied under the street light. Once he may have studied, but street light given. Ah, street light given, place to sit under the street light and study also what? Given. One day I had rice and dal. Next day I had dal and rice. Given. Dal given, rice given. So we have to acknowledge that. When we acknowledge that, then we become great, great. And we become, whether we become great or not, we become less unhappy and less resentful of other people's success. A self-made man is a miserable person, jealous of his own children. <laughs> See, you are wasting so much money. How hard I work, how much I have to say. The children say, Dad, you did it for us, right? So that we can spend. Shut up. <laughs> Go study. <laughs> what a life. Sad life. Finite at 
fractions get to get to finite fruit. Bata. That's why only knowledge can guide us to the infinite. But is knowledge not a fruit? Good question. It is true. We say jnana bhala. We do say that. The fruit of knowledge. We do say that. But the word fruit itself in, in Sanskrit, the meaning of the word we, you have heard in the class is embedded in the word itself. Right? Like anadaha. What is the meaning of the word anadaha? Fire. Why is it called anadaha? Alam navidyate kasya. That which doesn't know the meaning of enough. The fire you keep putting ghee. It will not say bus bus uh, cholesterol. <laughs> I love cholesterol. <laughs> Don't lay thick on the ghee. It will not say that. One village if you have for breakfast, it will be ready immediately for lunch and go to the next village. So that's why you see the meaning of the word fire is embedded in the word fire. And so too the word fruit. Haligutaya liyate di halam. So the word fruit, the meaning, the yutpati, the derivation of the word fruit is that which is subject to rotting is fruit. Now you won't feel like eating fruit. So <laughs> we'll have to have a second look at the fruit. That which is subject to rotting. You came for banana, first day you did banana, second day you did banana. Banana. And then last day, nana. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. I can't eat this. This is what fruit is. So that's why it's called karma bhala, fruit of action. It is like that, like the fruit. What does it do? Rots. Rots like any fruit. But jnana phalam, when we say, the fruit of which, uh, we mean it figuratively. No, is, if the knowledge is not finite as well? No, the knowledge of you is infinite. You are infinite. So the knowledge is also infinite. Yeah. Mine is not finite. Huh? <laughs> Mine is more for finite. <laughs> yeah, right now you can say that. But it is infinite. Because you are infinite. So the knowledge of you will cannot be finite. It is also infinite. So that which is infinite is not subject to rotting. Even though we may say, I receive the prasada of jnana or the phala of jnana. It's more figurative. Okay. How do we create a manatam discipline in our hectic schedule? Suggestions would be appreciated. I think you will appreciate this suggestion very much. Don't. <laughs> Give yourself a break. Because a lot of assimilation is already happening. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. And then, this is manatam. What we are doing here in our hectic schedule, this is manatam. You are learning through other people's questions. Other people are learning through your questions. That's why I say I ask in public. Because everybody can benefit. Not just you. Because everybody can benefit. Because sometimes they will also have the same question. And they won't even know they have it. Because it is somewhere deep down. This is Mananam. Samshaya Vivritti is Mananam. Removal of doubts is called Mananam. So every Tuesday, Thursday, what are we doing? Marana. It's already inbuilt into the hectic schedule. And we also got one extra day of Marana. <laughs> yes. So easy. Oh, of course, the next question has to be on Shravana. <laughs> Can you explain Shravana? Is it simply listening or is there more to it? No, more to it, sorry. 
how quickly one gains clarity. So Shravanam is more like an open-eyed, concentrated meditation. That is what it is. Well, this is an interesting one. How come Duryodhana evaded assassination, backstabbing, and all other fates of tyrants for such a long time? What lesson is to be gleaned from his being allowed to persist further during the until the Great War? Was he some kind of an adharmic genius? Did he have the favor of some powerful devatas? Karma. That's all we can say. Karma. And for everything, the time has to come. In fact, for, the, for this particular questioner, I have a small surprise. Because when Yudhishthira went to heaven, Yudhishthira was, you know, these were only told the truth all the time. He was a booty, two shoes, he was the complete opposite of uh, this fellow, Duryodhana. And he goes to heaven and he finds Duryodhana there, eating grapes and being fat by all the maidens and limbs in heaven. Yudhishthira had a heart attack almost. He said, what? What is going on here? I have come to see this. This fellow of all people is in heaven. How? How is this possible? Where are my people? Where is Draupadi? Where is Nakula? Where is Sahadeva? Where is Arjuna? Where are all the people? And then one of the sevaks, an attendant in heaven, explains that if you do a, a, a little bit of papa and then a lot of punya, what happens? That little bit is exhausted first. So by chance, by mistake, Duryodhana had done some good, which would last only for two and a half minutes. And he was being very expansive. Oh, Yudhishthira, you here, come, 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 sit, sit, sit by me. Yudhishthira gave him a killing look. He said, I don't want to sit by you. I'm just very upset. And Duryodhana was just like, ah, look, I have the best nymphs in heaven serving me. And and I have a nice personal, uh, you know, what is that? Champi, massage person, giving me massage. And then uh, somebody is fanning me, look, look, look. And the Sevak in heaven says, don't worry. <laughs> he, he will not be here for too long. And while he was saying that, a chute opened. And then it went Duryodhana to the nether world. <laughs> And then Yudhishthira was crying. He said, I had to come see this. And, and then, where are, where is Draupadi? Where is, where is, where are all these people? Where are the brothers? They are in hell. What? How can they be in hell and this idiot in heaven? He told you. They have done a little bit of karma. So they are in, they are in hell for two minutes. Take me there. I don't even want to be here. So there he goes and sees Draupadi and all his brothers on stretchers, being stretched out. I know they are receiving some kind of chiropractic adjustment, but very painful doing chiropractic adjustment. But then that only lasts again for 3-4 minutes, and they all go back to heaven. So, karma. That's what it is. Karma and karma. So maybe he was a devotee gone wrong in the previous life. Sometimes the time has to come. The right kinds of people have to come to bring these tyrannical people down. Everything has to happen. Who is asking for the moksha? Is it Atma or the mind? Well, can Atma ask? No. No. You ask Atma and tell me. Can you ask a question? What will it say? No. It won't even say no, really speaking. Atma cannot ask. Atma simply is. Can the mind ask? Mind also inert jada. So the ahamkara illumined by consciousness, chit. 
tomorrow we'll be seen. That is in the Bada, theory of the philosophy of theory of if as though reflective consciousness. Consciousness that is reflected in the mind. Illumines the ahankara, illumines the chitta, illumines the buddhi. And then the ahankara says, Oh no, I'm ignorant. I feel bound. I want to be free. Let me ask for moksha. And then with the help of Vag Indriya, the organ of action called speech, one says, I want moksha. That's how it is. We'll see more about this tomorrow. <coughs> if the bodies are insentient and atma is unaffected, why is it wrong to hurt people? But it is not wrong to break a pot. Yeah, body is insentient, but it has borrowed sentience. It has borrowed the sentience from God. But it said, yes, it is insentient. Okay. So, and when I break the pot, it doesn't say, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Don't break me. If you break me, I will never forgive you because afterwards I will be known as a crackpot. So please don't break me. It will not say that. Why? Because it has no sukshma sharira. That sukshma sharira makes all the difference. The presence or the absence of the sukshma sharira decides whether one can borrow this sentience from consciousness or not. When there is Sukhma Sharira, then everything is because of the presence of the subtle body, the gross body is lit up. It becomes alive, it comes alive. It has pain sensors in the form of the work indriya, the skin, organ called, called the, the sense organ called skin. It has pain perceptions, the nerve endings are there, they become alive in turn. And pleasure and pain are both experienced. That is why it is wrong to hurt somebody because that accrues karma. That accrues bad karma called papa. Therefore, and it is okay to break a pot. Why you should break anything? But my mistake, if it breaks, it's okay. Why? Because it is not, it is not, uh, it is not. Uh, Reflecting any hurt because it is not sentient. Thank God there are certain things like that. Otherwise, the pot will say, I have been giving free service for the last month. When is my paycheck coming? It will say, Sama teaching pot. Where is my Dakshina? It will say that. Ah, so I'll have to do that next time because I want to clear this, but I will tell you. Okay? I will tell you. Very interesting. Ekadashi story. Is there any mantra to repel monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> the, the monkey monkey adventures are multiplying. Yeah. Hanuman Chalis. Chant Hanuman Chalis or play Hanuman Chalis. Do not make eye contact with them at all. Pretend they are not there. Carry your stick, but don't brandish it like this. When we see it as an act of aggression. Pretend they are not there. And don't smile at them. Do not show your teeth. Because seeing the teeth, they will think it's an act of aggression. 
Because when the monkey, the rod for attack, what does it do? Yeah, exactly. So they, they will think you are doing that to it. So, this is the, you have to just be very, very, very careful. Go in groups as much as possible with another person. And, and if you are taking, uh, you know, if you are going early in the morning for yoga and all these things, taking walks and all, be very, very careful. Especially if it is dark, you won't see, you won't see. And so, be careful. Careful, mindful. If it comes to attack, please use the stick. Unprovoked if it comes to attack. If it doesn't attack, then just go about your day without really giving it any, any thought. Can the Guru's grace resolve or erase Ahamka? Other than Atma Jnana, what can help dissolve or erase the Ahamka? See, Ahamka need not be erased. It has to be quote unquote enlightened, or at least lightened of the burden of thinking that it is the doer and it is done in. That is what it has to be. Destroy the ahankara, we say, mano nashaha, ahankara nashaha, but then again it's figurative. Because then if the ahankara is destroyed, then who is there to gain atma jnana? Who is there to say, I am a shishya? Who is there to say, I am a student study? And who is there to say, I am, I, I, I know Brahman, I am Brahman. Who is there to say, I am, I know I am Brahman. So, it is the sublation of the knower, the knocking off of the ahankara. is a figurative expression, which means it is being, it is being uh, sublated, as though negated, but it's not that. It is being relieved of the burden of thinking that it is the agent of action, including the knowing, and it is the recipient of the results of action. That is what the ahankara is being scrubbed, unless the Guru's grace helps a lot. Because what, what Guru's grace means what? Guru's grace is no different from Bhagavan's grace. Bhagavan's grace is no, uh, and Guru's grace no different from the grace of the Shastra that makes this magic happen. And Bhagavan's grace, Guru's grace, uh, and Shastra's grace is no different than Atma Anugraha. The grace of your, the, the grace that you give to yourself, the grace of receiving this knowledge without any resistance, fears, or blocks. That is the best grace. When the uh, fears and blocks are removed, then the knowledge shall be But you have to permit yourself by being in a place of receptivity, receiving without, uh, receiving without a lot of turmoil or resistance or fear or whatever the blocks are. So the grace of the Guru combined with your own permission that you give yourself can do miracles. Absolutely. And seva, seva helps to grow up the ahankara a bit. All kinds of seva helps. Last one. You mentioned how a limited finite mind cannot conceive of a limitless infinite Brahman. How do we prepare the mind to receive this knowledge, to be Brahman worthy? Just like this. It's just a corollary of the last uh, uh, question. So, the first of all, the mind is a two-headed being. How used properly it can be the cause of moksha used improperly 
it can be the cause of further bondage. This is what the Amrita Vignu Upanishad says. Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayoho. It is the karana for bandha bondage. And it is also simultaneously, it can be a cause for liberation. Bandhai vishaya sattam. So when does it become a cause of bondage? When there is no vairagya or very little vairagya. Then it can become a cause of bondage. And vishaya vivin mukta, when it is free of longing, so the mind is trained to be free of all kinds of cravings. Because any longing is for us to have a sense of belonging, really. There is a connection. So when you learn to feel at home with yourself, the mind also applies. I like to look at it this way. In the beginning, the mind is the king. It sits on the throne and analyzes each and every sentence in the Upanishad. Analyzes everything and says, why this? Why that? How come this? How? Why not this? And then what do you have to do? You have to say, get out. <laughs> Ahankara and mind, all of them are there on the throne. You get a lot of good things. This is what the mind is. Every process has to go through me, not this one. Shut up, get up. First you have to put the tape on the mind's mouth and then you have to make it get up. Shoot, get up. You have no business here because you are trying to objectify that which can never is not an object. You are trying to name something which has no name. You are trying to find out the form of something that has no form. You are trying to list the attributes of something that is free of attributes. You are trying to make that which is you into a, an other. You are not another, it is you. Go away, show. When it hangs its head in shame and goes out. Let me take pity on the mind and ask it to come through the back door. And then sit as the servant, not as the as the master. If then what happens? Then something wonderful happens with the trained mind. If you say shoo, that means you are meditating. Okay, yeah. A shoo is meditation. That's how you become a mohok shoo. Alright. Yeah. And then then you bring it in through the back door, not as the agent of knowledge but as a receptacle, a place where the knowledge shines. It is no longer the noble, the pravada, the karta, the bhokta, the jnata. No, it is not a noble, it is not a noble, it is not a nature. It is simply a place where the knowledge shines. So it is safe to say that the knowledge is not gained because of the mind, but in spite of the mind, somehow the knowledge is gained. And it is also nice to say that the mind is not an agent of knowledge, but the place where the knowledge shines. So therefore it has to be kept free of debris, otherwise it's like a forest. You do some pruning, cutting, clearing, then you have Bhagavad Darshanam within. We have moksha from many weeks questions today. Okay. So always we can say bye bye to her. One question is pending. Make all the shapes. Alright? I will I will interest you. Poor poor samadha, poor kina, poor kama, poor dachare, poor asya, poor kamadaya, poor kameva, shishate, poor sham, disham, disham, hari yo, shri yo, namam, hari yo.